Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Wow, here we go. The situation continues to spiral down. I'm going to bring you everything you need to know. I'll keep you up to date. The first thing I want to look at is onward and upward. What have we seen going up in price dramatically? I will give you the details. It's more shocking than you think. The second thing I want to talk about is the cut. What has been severed, the geopolitical tensions, and everything that's rising, I will cover all of that and more. Let's begin right here. You can see that oil traders bet prices will pass $200 a barrel this month. When we saw oil at around $80 a barrel, you had the calls for $100. And I said that looked pretty likely. It looked like it was going to head there, but not in a straight line. And we did see oil come down to about $65 a barrel, and it found its way back up, and now it has really gone high. $200 a barrel was kind of, you know, you would see an article here or there, some analysts would mention it, but it's kind of, you know, down in the future sort of thing. Now that seems to be more likely. Look at it today. As I record this video right here, nearly $123 a barrel. This is extreme. For WTI, in this case here, I'm using the ticker US oil, but you can see what has happened. Many people said, absolutely not, no way, it's not gonna happen. And this particular event had sent it there probably much quicker than it would have if we were under normal conditions. So $200 a barrel, I'm not sure, but I'm telling you right now, we are heading towards that direction really fast. Some would argue that if we see the tensions increase between the US and Russia, particularly if you know they sever that tie and just say no more oil, you can't do this or that, no more exporting, then of course we would do that. But that would be catastrophic, I believe, that this would lead to another stage of what we are experiencing today. From oil to nickel to wheat, commodities mayhem in five charts. I've been talking about commodities for a long time, of course, even in my books, but specifically over the last little while saying, hey, enough with the seven shares of Amazon, take a look at the seven two by fours instead. And then, you know, broadly speaking, I was talking about commodities. Global crude benchmark rally to near $140 on Monday, nickel jumped as much as 90%. My goodness. My goodness, I mean, th this is just unheard of. If you look at it historically, I mean, I just keep seeing all the time, new record, new record, new record, all the time, every single day, I'm, I'm seeing that, beating previous records. Okay, so you could see, obviously, oil, you know, you know the deal, we are heading very closely towards a record high. This happens to be Brent crude, the same for WTI, it doesn't matter where you look, they are going towards extremes. Here you can see nickel, look at that. We are at a record, but the, the spike, nothing like this before. So this right here was back in 2008, and you'll see the same sort of spike, that, that's how you know that's that time frame. When 2007 into 2008, there was this huge boom in commodities, but what happened after? If you're not familiar, which I'm sure most of you are, but we had this huge boom in commodities, and then massive, deflation, financial crisis, housing collapse, and all of that, jobs lost, the economy down, you know the drill. Okay, so this is very important because a huge deflation could follow after what we are seeing with this major inflation. But again, I don't know what's going to happen. I am reporting to you as it does happen. So this is talking about natural gas. It gets into the details of those few, but you could see European gas fluctuates in a record range on Monday as supply fears royal markets. So my friends, I mean, I'll talk about a different type of gas in a second, gasoline, that is petrol. And when you hear about what's going on in one country like the United States paying record prices, and then, you know, you go to my friends in Europe and they'll say, those are record prices. We'll talk more about that in a second. Wheat, look at this, they are just off their record high. Now this right here is very worrisome, why? If wheat starts to encounter huge price spikes like it is right now, 
we could see major turmoil, civil unrest, because people are not going to be able to afford bread. And that's one that feeds a lot of people globally. And you start to see the uprising. You start to see the global economy start to come down. What is the number one way to have, you know, um, I would say better times, less crime, um, just in general, things are better. How do we do this? We increase prosperity. And if you have people that literally can't even afford to eat, that prosperity not going to be there. You will see crime elevate and so on. So gasoline, you could see a record price. Record price. This chart goes back to 2005, but it is quite extreme no matter how you look at it. I got more charts here. You could look at that the daily national average of gasoline price hitting a record high also right here this breaks it down on the map because i know i got people all over the us as well as all around the world and just to note you could see on the west coast real high prices they're paying if you go to the middle much lower and much lower so we just see that and of course you also see something with you know the prices that people pay for real estate on the West Coast compared to people, you know, in the middle of the U.S. Very, very different story. Here you have it just going all the way back. We have never seen a spike like this before. The 11-day change is the highest going back years and years. Quite extreme to say the least, okay? Nickel spikes 60%. Here's why that matters and who will be hit. Metals use in EV batteries has caught the market's attention. Car makers like Tesla see higher costs as nickel prices soar. When the input costs are higher, what does that mean for the consumer? They're going to pay more. They're going to pay more. And of course, if the people are paying more for the products that they're already using, that they have to use, if it's, you know, let's say wheat, well then, they're going to have less money to go to the movie theater, less money to go to the restaurant, less money to spend in the economy. I've said it a thousand times. And I'll probably say it a thousand times more. Russia is one of the world's biggest suppliers of the metal. So if they start to do sanctions, if they say, no, we're not going to deal with that company, no, we're not going to deal with this company, suddenly they have to look for other suppliers globally. And you don't do that. And especially you don't turn on a mine just like a flip of the switch. These things take years and years. More than 70% of the global supply of nickel goes into making stainless steel. So you here you can see the price itself, okay? And I believe this is where the, yes, right here. How nickel is used, 72% stainless steel, alloys and plating, batteries, 7%, and 1% another. So that is important because it's a significant part here. Stainless steel used, I mean, ev everything stainless steel. And now if we have a problem getting the nickel, straight straight up take a look at this we futures you could look at where it has been extreme to say the least okay then we have this and by the way i know i'm going fast i realize that there's so much data that i need to cover in fact i have i don't even know 30 at least 30 different charts and articles that i have to put together in another video that i've been basically collecting and now i hope they're still relevant i gotta go through them because there's just new data pouring out all the time and that video will focus on the markets aspect of what we're seeing today so stay tuned for that if you want to just hit that thumbs up button because doing that will make you more likely to see these videos to come up more in your home feed and i'm noticing according to the analytics more people are seeing these in their home feed, so thank you for that. He pointed out that a quarter of the key nutrients used in European food production come from Russia. At the same time, we're doing whatever we can to do at this moment to find additional sources. Basically, this is talking about uh, you know, fertilizer products and so on, and how this is extremely important. Uh, and of course, if you don't have these fertilizer products, you're going to get less yield, ultimately less money for the crops bad for the farmers um, you know people will pay higher prices for the equivalent amount of food and so on nutrients aren't the only factor consider huge amounts of natural gas are needed to produce ammonia the key ingredient in nitrogen fertilizer so another thing prices are rising and it's just getting so extreme to say the least then you also have the currency factor here while the U.S. dollar might be increasing against its peers like the euro, there's another one that has been smashed in relation. Russia's ruble fell sharply in thin trading on Monday to a fresh record low. 
So when you have sanctions in particular, it really crushes the currency. Uh, just look at any example where there are sanctions and you see how bad it gets really quickly. And the more serious the sanctions are, the bigger the hit. Minimal U.S. imports and uh, from and uh, FDI into uh, foreign direct investment, by the way, FDI, foreign direct investment, into Russia exempted goods constitute the majority of Russian exports. So on the left side, they're just showing us the U.S. and Russia imports and exports, breaking it all down, okay? Just look at, I can highlight this. I mean, I'm not going to cover the whole, the whole chart. You'll fall asleep. But this right here, by the way, Russia on this side, U.S. on this side. And just look at this. Exports. Take a guess what that is, what they're exporting. Energy. Massive. Massive. That looks like approximately 12.5% of the GDP in energy alone. So quite significant. Okay. And then there's just foreign direct investment stock invested into the EU, US. So that's EU, US, and Russia. Okay. So you're looking at the amount of cash coming in. This right here just tells us the green area that the EU tends to invest in Russia. Obviously, geographically important together, they are the ones that will suffer most. And we've already seen that from what we're seeing right now. Surging price of everything spells stagflation and risk of recession. Barclays and JP Morgan cut growth outlook, lift inflation view. Commodities surging amid fears of new sanctions in Russia. You know all this data. I know that. The question, is it going to be stagflation? Is it inflation? Is it hyperinflation? Is it deflation? What do you think? Put it down in the comments below. What do you think it's going to be? I mean, I could see scenarios of all of them, but it really, I think it's, uh, you know, a different series of stages. I think that's really what this is all about. Another important factor here, which I wanted to mention, which I'm not sure if I did in the previous ones, you know, you, you may, uh, I know you're aware of it, but just to put this thought into your head, there's a lot of these pipelines that run from Russia through Ukraine and into uh, countries, you know, countries to the west of it and, and to the south. Anyway, the point is, what if maybe, not even if they turn off the tap, what if there's, you know, an event that suddenly that pipeline is disrupted? Now there's no gas. So it didn't have to be a sanction. It didn't have to be a disagreement. It didn't have to be cutting off the tap. Maybe there is some sort of, you know, situation that occurs. Now that pipeline is out of service. And it could be out of service for an extended period. So I want to just, you know, have you be reminded of that, that this could be for multiple events, multiple different events could lead up to that scenario. Okay. I hope you appreciate this message. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Are you subscribed? No? I can't believe it. Come on, you got to join the rest of the 280,000 people here on the channel. I want to thank all of you new subscribers, old subscribers. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.